All right. So, um, hi, my name is Ellie. I'm from Clumhouse. I teach bag making and I've taught it for, gosh, it seems like over, it's, it's over 20 years now. Um, so I founded Clumhouse back about six years ago, teaching sewing in my basement in Portland, Oregon. And, um, oh yeah, I can see some of the chat. So maybe that's good. Maybe that's it. I can get, get some questions from there. Yay. Okay. So, um, we teach bag making and we um, design patterns and kits for bag making. And I also sell a ton of like bag making supplies like wax canvas and mallets and all that. So I just wanted to share some information about getting started in bag making because it's a little bit different than a lot of other types of sewing. A lot of people start out sewing in garments and they or they start out sewing just home goods or whatever. Um, so a lot of times it's a little bit of a leap to get over to bag making, but it's not too bad. Um, but you do just need a really good hammer, a really good mallet, and just to get a little more comfortable with like leather and hardware and stuff. And then um, we use like more heavier duty fabrics like wax canvas and duck canvases and denims and stuff. So um, Anna just said there's a question about an iron. Um, and what type of iron to use, I believe. One of the funny things about a lot of the bag making that we do, it's with wax canvas. And we actually don't iron wax canvas. So let me grab the Portsmouth tote here, um, which is one of our um, beginner bag making projects. So this is a um, basic tote bag, but and it's made out of wax canvas. So I'm actually going to crumple it and show you how it shows, see all those marks? And that's the wax kind of like um, showing up on the fabric and especially because it's winter, you can see the wax a little more because it's more solid. So this is wax canvas and I absolutely love it for bag making because it's, it's the original waterproof fabric, but it also has some body and structure. So when we are making bags, one of the things we're concerned about is does it have body, does it have structure, can it be durable, right? And that's a little different than the concerns that we have when we're making garments, right? So some of those concerns would be like, how does it feel on my body? How does it fit on my body? Is it easy to get in and out of? Well, when we're making bags and designing them, we're asking ourselves, well, is it durable? Is it comfortable to carry? Can it fit all the things I want to carry? Does it have enough pockets? Um, so we really, I like to specialize in showing people how to make simple classic bags that look professional. And um, also you can attach leather with hardware. So I know a lot of us are sewing on home sewing machines and I'm going to go over that a little bit, but you don't need an industrial sewing machine to make bags. If you want to add leather and your machine won't sew through leather, you can use rivets and we reinforce the rivets with leather washers. So it's really important to when you attach hardware to really make sure it's a durable and strong attachment point. So we tend to sandwich the fabric between two pieces of leather, like the strap and the washer. So since wax canvas is waxed, we don't use an iron and it will stay pressed if you finger press it, or you can use a roller or you could use a bone folder, which is another tool we really like. Um, if you are working with non-waxed canvas, then um, you should totally use your iron on a steam setting and just really press that heavier fabric. Um, so, you know, one of my main things with sewing is I don't think we need a lot of really fancy equipment to make good things and to make professional and high quality stuff. I use mechanical machines. So that's non-computerized machines that don't have the LCD screen. And I don't think there's anything wrong with that. But I like to teach and show sort of like on the more basic level equipment so that whatever you're using you can have access to what I'm showing, right? So you'll see behind me that um, I have the one of my favorite machines for bag making, which is the Singer Heavy Duty 4423. And my other favorite 
um, home sewing machine for bag making is the Janome HD 1000 or HD 3000 if you have the newer version. Um, so let me see her. No, can't quite get to the chat. So um, those are the two heavy duty machines that I recommend at a lower price point. Now I'm going to talk a little more about that. And then I saw some questions come through that Anna texted me. So um, heavy duty machines are different than regular home sewing machines only in that they will have like a little bit of a stronger motor. So they can really pull thick fabric through the machine a little bit easier than a machine that isn't quote unquote heavy duty. Now, heavy duty is not necessarily industrial because it's still a home machine, but it's just built with a little bit more like metal parts, a little bit stronger of a motor. So it has that oomph to pull the heavier duty, thicker fabric through the machine. So that's the really basic in a nutshell. But all, out of all the thousands of people that I've taught and all the hundreds of classes that I've taught, I have taught people on tons of different types of home sewing machines and industrial machines, and they've been able to sew the projects that I teach because they're really basic, and um, but you get a really professional result. So anyways, I just wanted to say like you can use a wide variety of home sewing machines. But heavy, but sewing machines that are sold as heavy duty machines are going to be your best go to to make bags. OK, so let me go ahead and check and see what questions have come in. I know there's a question about needles um, and there is a question about thread. OK, and wax in the home machine. Okay. And I like this question. What if your machine struggles with multiple layers and zipper tape, thick seams, any recommendations? Okay. So let me talk a little bit about needles. So my favorite go-to standard needle for bag making is going to be the chrome plated um, professional chrome grade denim needles size 100. So that's just like your basic heavy duty bag making needle. Now um, we do sell these on our site and um, Anna can pop a link in there for you. And my second, I've been really into nonstick needles lately, also size 100 because they work really good with wax canvas and they help the wax not build up on the needle. But whatever you're sewing with, um, it's just good to make sure you have a sharp new needle. So I encourage you to change your needle often. Now, some people say you should change it every project. You don't necessarily have to do that, but just know, especially if you're sewing through some thick layers of fabric and you hear a noise or your machine gets caught up um, and you know the needle kind of hit something, go ahead and change it because you might not be able to see if the needle broke or if the needle, if anything happened to it or if it bent, but chances are it did bend a little and it did. Um, and that's not just, it's just really not good for the machine and it's not going to give you a good stitch. So I recommend denim size 100. That's my go-to. We sell those on our site, but I've been really into um, nonstick needles too. And I don't mind using top stitch needles. And the main difference there is top stitch needles have that larger hole in the eye. And when I'm making like the Slab Town backpack, which is our advanced project, um, I'll just show it to you really quick. It's like an advanced backpack project that I teach. I um, will run two threads through the top of the machine into a top stitchy needle. And the eye of the needle is big enough to fit the two threads in or two all purpose threads for top stitching. I'm not sure if I said that right. So it's two threads on the top and then one on the bottom and it looks really good and it looks like top stitching thread, but it's not and the machine likes it a little bit better than just the top stitching thread. So that, that's my that's my needles answer. Someone did ask about thread. Um, so, you know, honestly, like I said, I'm really into just like simple classic. So I just use all purpose thread. So Guterman, I'm just opening my thread bag here to show you, is what we sell on our site. 
And that's my go-to for bag making. So this is just Guterman all-purpose thread. And it's poly. And poly thread's really strong. So that's my go-to for bag making. Okay. So someone, oh, yes, I see that in chat. Maybe it's an older question, but asking about basic list of tools for beginner bag making. So that kind of segues a little bit into um, so be, the beginner bag making class that we are enrolling right now, where you make the um, Portsmouth tote, and then you also make the woodland dop kit. And I know someone asked about multiple layers of fabric and zippers, and we'll talk about that. And so, and then you also get a sewing 101 online class and all those three pre-recorded videos come in the class with um, a whole bunch of beginner bag making supplies that we sell on our site and that we recommend. And I'll show those to you in a second. Plus some um, live stream help, some like we go live once a week and we talk about the projects. We talk about what happened with your machine, what your experience of making was like, what your wins were, what your challenges were, and we really build skills specific to where you're at. So that is um, the beginner bag making class. It also comes with the two patterns for those projects. But going back to, um, and then it comes with the fabric and, and everything to make the bags. Going back to the question about beginner bag making tools, let me just show you my basic go-tos of what I think are just really good to have in your sewing studio to kind of make a wide variety of bags. Um, my favorite way to mark canvas, wax canvas, denim, and any heavyweight fabric is going to be these um, Chocopel Clover pencils. And they come, like one pencil is actually has like two or three colors in it. And it's just really, really good for marking. Um, I have it here, but I don't, oh yeah, I do have fabric. Um, for marking like wax canvas. So this is the wax canvas. Here's like the pencil marks. So I just really like these because the chalk is like hard enough to make a thin line, but soft enough for the line to really show up. Um, it doesn't erase easily, right? But most of the time when I'm making marks on my fabric, it's because I'm cutting on those lines or I'm sewing on those lines. So if I am going to make a mark on my fabric and I know it's going to show, I just use a light hand, right? Um, so these are my favorite pencils for marking fabric. It's a nice blend between like really soft chalk and the really hard pencils. Um, and yeah, it just has a really great tip for canvases. Um, my next go-to beginner thing is craft clips. So craft clips are really, really good for, um, let me just show you one, for bag making because um, a lot of times we use really thick layers of fabric. So like if I'm trying to say hold this together here, um, my pin isn't going to go through that super easy. So I can just go on and put a craft clip on. So craft clips are like super essential for bag making because they're really good for holding multiple thick layers of fabric. My next go-to we've already talked about is going to be just like a really good pack of denim needles. Um, everybody needs a seam ripper and Clover is just my favorite um, notions company. It's a Japanese notions company and I just find a lot of their stuff is super high quality. So it's just like a really high quality, good seam ripper because, hey, we're all, we all make mistakes, right? So, um, Oh, someone, uh, there's another question in chat that I'll get to. So a good seam ripper is going to be a major tool for beginner bag making. Um, these are my favorite pins, and these are flower flathead pins, um, flower head or whatever. But I really like the flathead pins for bag making because we use um, quilting rulers a lot, and I forgot to bring one in here. Uh, but I'll have Anna put the link to one in chat. But my favorite ruler to use, um, and this, all of these tools, by the way, come with the beginner bag making enrollment. So if you sign up for the class, you will get a package that has all this stuff in it. So the 24 inch by six inch um, OmniGrid 
neon ruler is my favorite ruler for bag making because um, you can see through it and it's nice and long, which helps you um, mark the correct places for all your hems and your um, leather strap placement. Yeah. So my, that's my favorite ruler. And um, what else have I not shown you? I guess that's all I've shown. That's kind of my main. Oh, yeah. For, for leather and hardware, um, this is just a household hammer. And I got to say, it's probably the most important non-sewing tool that you need for bag making. If you want to splurge, um, and I suggest getting a Bakelite mallet, which is our favorite recommendation of type of mallet for bag making. So this isn't essential for setting double cap rivets, but it is essential for setting tubular rivets. So we didn't get into that as much because tubular rivets are used a little bit more on the more advanced projects. So like if we take a look at this Maywood tote, which is one of the um, intermediate projects, you could see the back, the front of the rivet looks like this. So it's just plain like a rivet. And then the back looks like a little metal flower. And that is actually set with a tubular rivet peening tool. And that has to be set with a mallet. Now, if you look at the back of a double cap rivet on the be this beginner project, the Portsmouth tote, you'll see that it also, it's just flat like the front. So these types of rivets can just be set with a hammer. If you want to set them with a mallet, you could also use a rivet setter and hit the rivet setter, which then sets the rivet. Um, and that just preserves like a little bit more roundness on the rivet cap as opposed to just hitting the rivet with a hammer. So then another tool that is important for bag making, especially if you're going to use rivets, is going to be a drive punch. And the drive punch should be used with a punching board. So these tools also come in the beginner bag making class package. So this is going to be really important to use when you attach your leather to your bag. You need to punch holes all the way through the fabric to get the rivets through. So, um, yeah. So in order to, and then you also would use the drive punch to punch holes in the leather. But in the kits that we sell, the leather, it, it already comes with the holes punched. Um, lastly, uh, speaking of setting hardware, this is a stone slab, and this is super important to have underneath your rivet when you're setting it with a hammer. Oops, that was my drive punch. So if you're going to set your rivet on your table, you're just going to want to have you guys can't see this, but you're going to want to have the stone slab, the rivet, and then hit it with the hammer. And then you also, on top of being on a stone slab, you should be on a pretty stable, hard table, right? Because we want to minimize the bounce on the table when you're setting your rivets. So I know I'm getting a little into the nitty gritty of a rivet setting, but rivet setting and hardware and leather, that is like majorly what sets bag making apart from a lot of other types of sewing. And it tends to be the thing that a lot of people haven't tried yet, or it tends to be the thing that can be a little intimidating to try when you're just starting out. If you don't have a drive punch or a punching board, I just want to say there's one other way that's common to make holes in the fabric to attach rivets or other types of hardware like snaps and whatnot. And that's a rotary punch. So this is basically just a drive punch with a lot of other different holes in it, hole sizes. Okay, so I'm going to check the chat and see what else um, people are asking. Okay. There's a question if we've ever made our own wax canvas. Oh, I wanted to get back to this question. What if your machine struggles with multiple layers and zipper tape, thick seams, any recommendations? I love that question because I actually think that's one of the main reasons that a lot of people don't like bag making. And I love to talk, like to help people through that and talk about why that happens and how we can prevent it. 
So without getting too much in the weeds, um, and also just so you know, with the beginner bag making course, that the enrollment ends on Monday, by the way, but there's a class, a pre-recorded set of videos in there that I teach that I recorded in the past um, called Sewing 101. And I know even if you're advanced, you will get something out of that class because what I talk about in there is how the machine is designed to be used and um, sort of how to set it up for success. And we talk about how the stitch is made and tension and timing and really understand how the machine works. It's very simple mechanism, but if you understand tension and timing, you will understand how you can sew whatever your machine is capable of sewing. And that's why I wanted to go there with that answer is because, yes, some sewing machines will not be strong enough to sew up to certain layers of thickness of fabric, but often you can push your machine to be able to do that if you know how to set it up for success. So one of the main things we do is we'll change the presser feet on our sewing machines or we'll use different tools like the Gina Majig. And I can have Anna throw that in the chat, a link to that. But um, it basically helps the machine sew up and over a thick seam and back down to a thin part. So if you notice when your machine starts to have trouble with a thick part, it's like not every part of your project is really thick, right? So if I go and, or like your machine might sew through certain stitches on your project, but not other ones, right? So I'm gonna just show you a little bit of what I'm talking about in here. Um, I'm gonna turn this bag inside out to show the stitches from when I made it. But I mostly wanna show you the side seam. So as I was sewing the side seam, you know, up here is a hem and there's a hem on both sides. So you get with a hem, the fabric is folded and this is double turn hem. So the fabric's folded twice and then there's the main piece. So you have the three layers of fabric because of the hem right there. And on the, on the then on the other side, another three layers. So you're sewing six layers of fabric there, but then here where the hem isn't, you're only sewing two layers of fabric. Right. And then you come down here and remember I sewed like a black reinforcement. So this is an extra piece of fabric that's laying over this brown fabric. And that is done with an envelope um, seam. And we I teach all that in the Portsmouth tote class in the beginner bag making um, course. You get to this area and you're going through you know, eight, nine, 10 layers just up here where there's a hem. So the your machine might be fine here, not fine here, okay here, you know what I mean? So I think that, but if you can't sew that one inch or half inch where it's eight layers thick, then you can't sew the project, right? So that can be pretty frustrating. So a few different things, and I talk about this in the Sewing 101 videos, is you wanna set your machine up for success so you can move over to walking foot attachment, which will help your machine have an even feed from the top layers and the bottom layers. And anyone that's joining us that's a quilter knows about that, that type of foot. Um, you can also use your hand wheel, turn it towards you and, and sort of manually sew through a, the thick areas. You can also use a Gina Majig, like I mentioned. Um, and it's nice also to use like the nonstick needles that I also talked about already because those help the needle go in and out of the fabric and it reduces drag. So again, without getting too far in the weeds about the mechanics of the machine, and I talk a lot about that in the Sewing 101 class, then um, you need to make sure the machine keeps tension and timing. So you want to reduce drag because when the fabric is thick and there's a lot of layers, there's a lot of drag and then the timing gets off or the fabric's so thick that the presser foot can't go down all the way. And when the presser foot is up, the machine lets the tension off the top thread and you won't get a stitch. So having a sharp needle, using a nonstick needle helps. Um, Putting a walking foot attachment also helps. Making sure your machine is well oiled and maintained helps. 
Um, so I hope that helps a little. And again, I really encourage um, the Sewing 101 class or beginner bag making course to really dive deep into that. Um, that question also talked about the zipper. So again, without getting too far in the weeds, one of the main things about the Dop Kit project that I absolutely love is that I share my favorite easy technique for successful zipper sewing. And um, it has to do with making sure that you're able to evenly feed the fabric through, but still um, not have the presser foot land on the zipper teeth. Because if your presser foot is pressing down on your zipper teeth, it's not going to sew a good stitch because it's not pressing the fabric evenly on the feed dog. Okay. So again, we're getting technical and I get really technical in my classes in the videos that are in the beginner bag making class because I really believe that if you understand what's going on, why something's going on when you're trying to make it and it's not working out, then you can troubleshoot it and you can take that knowledge and bring it into any project that you're, that you're working on. Um, so I hope that helps. And let me go to a couple other questions. Um, someone is asking if heavy duty machines use a walking foot. And yes, you can add a walking foot attachment to most heavy duty machines. Um, and someone's asking if I've made my own wax canvas and I don't tend to make my own wax canvas. And the main reason is because it tends to be a lot thicker when you make it yourself because you the wax will sit on the outside layer of the fabric as opposed to wax canvas that I buy from the commercial mill where they're able to sort of stretch the fibers of the canvas and pour the hot wax on so that it really permeates all the way through the fabric and it gives a more subtle um, texture and it's a little easier for the home sewing machines to sew at least the ones that I've I've sewn on so I tend to not make my own wax canvas but um, it's cool I've seen a lot of stuff max canvas that people have made with beeswax and it always smells so good and then you can pick whatever color um so here's a question um can you talk about the difference between sewing a wax canvas bag versus a full leather bag besides needing a leather a stronger sewing machine and needles what are some general differences okay so that's similar to another question that someone asked about sewing leather denim and other heavy machines um they want a machine that does that, but they also want to sew garment shoes, furniture, and chairs. Okay. So both of those questions are leaning towards sewing machines that are actually industrial. So the reason I say that is because leather, it's not a fabric, right? It's leather. So it's not woven and woven fabrics, um, the needle finds its way in through the weave in order to put the stitch into it, right? So um, when you get into these uh, leather, it's so dense, there is no weave, there's kind of no way for the needle on a home sewing machine to have the power a lot of time to find its way through the leather. Now you could sew like one, two ounce, three, four ounce leather on a home sewing machine, but remember we're usually sewing one thing to another. So you're not talking about one layer of leather, you're talking about two at least, and leather doesn't fray, so you don't need to do hems as much. But inevitably, if you're boxing a corner or something, you're going to get into four layers. Well, a home sewing machine, even a heavy duty one like this Janome HD 1000 or the Singer HD could probably only handle, um, you know, three, maybe four layers of two ounce leather. So you do max out a home sewing machine for sewing leather because the motor is just not going to have the power to push the needle through that many dense layers of material. So in, in a nutshell, that's what's happening and why you would need to go into the more industrial realm. So industrial sewing machines for bag making and for leather craft tend to be industrial walking foot machines. I'm not going to spend a ton of time talking about industrial machines, but a standard industrial walking foot sewing machine would be all you would need. 
Um, so like a conso um, or a uh, sale right fabricator or a Juki, um, some of those are great machines. The Conso 206 RB5 is one of my favorite um, bag baking industrial machines. So those machines are really specific. They usually will just do a straight stitch um, walking foot. Um, and they usually come on a table, except I know that SailRite has a tabletop version that is a little smaller, but the motor, it, it's so powerful and big that it's mounted under the table, whereas on home sewing machines, like say this Janome here, if I turn this, you can see this little area here where the motor um, has a fan and it can exhaust from there. So the motor is in the head of the machine on a home sewing machine, well, on industrials, the motor's too big to sit in the head of the machine. So it gets attached to a table, hence a bigger motor, more powerful, has the power to puncture the leather. And so some of these more um, robust, thicker projects that you're talking about. So I hope that that helps. I'm going to go back to the chat and see what else we have. Um, Okay, someone's just asking, is the dop, dop bag class the one on your site? Um, so the Woodland Dop Kit is a project that's on our website, and it, it is a standalone project. You don't have to do it in the beginner bag making course, um, but I am really interested in showing people that journey from starting out to building the skills to learning a zipper and learning leather and whatever through our beginner bag making course. But yes, you can purchase the Woodland Dop Kit class and kit. If you buy the full kit on our site, you can get the online class for 50% off if you purchase them at the same time. So um, Anna can put that link in chat for you. Okay, let's see if there, um, there's one question I, skipped over that I see now am wondering if wax canvas will ruin your domestic machine and it will not as far as I have noticed in the years that I've sewn with wax canvas um, but we do tend to clean the wax out of our feed dogs and we tend to clean it out of um, the eye of the needle or you just switch your needle and so we do have a blog post on our site that we can put a link in chat to that's how to clean wax from your machine. But the wax is essentially oil and the machine needs to be oiled. So I don't, other than um, attracting lint, you know, but I'll usually clean and brush lint out of my machine anyways. Um, I haven't found that it's ruined any of my machines. So I hope that helps. Okay, so someone is asking about finishing the exposed seam edges inside an unlined wax canvas bag. Um, so I think that's an interesting, it's interesting because with bag making and especially industrial heritage type bag making, we tend to have exposed seams a little bit more than you would see in garment stitching. Um, we tend to embrace a little bit more of like the rugged look and feel of the bag um, in the project. So for instance, on the Portsmouth tote, the seam that it's unlined. So it is just finished with a zigzag stitch so that it doesn't fray. But if you did want to finish this seam, um, you could do a binding tape or a twill tape and you could just cover the seam like that. Or you could drop a lining into it and sew it in, obviously, cover the seam. But another way, um, and I don't know if you would call this an exposed seam or not, but another way that I use to finish a seam is a French seam. So this is also an unlined bag. This is our Belmont. Uh, pouch. It is a tote bag and it also turns into a backpack if you pull these straps, which is fun. Uh, but this uses a French seam on the inside of the bag to finish the seam. So you could see that. So that's what all tend to use French seams a lot. But in the Portsmouth tote, because it's a beginner project, we tend to use a zigzag stitch because it's nice and simple. It makes the project really approachable. 
Um, someone's asking or talking about their wax canvas needs to be cleaned. We actually sell wax canvas spot cleaner. Um, so sometimes wax canvas will start to smell like more like crayons or, or whatever. Um, cause you don't tend to throw it in the washer cause it's wax. So we'll, we'll, um, clean it with like a spot cleaner. And that is a product that we have for sale on our site. I'll have Anna put that in chat for you. What else do you all want to know? Um, Can you talk about the difference between sewing a wax canvas bag versus a full leather bag? We kind of talked about that. Can you embroider on wax canvas? I have seen embroidery being done on wax canvas, but it's not as common. Um, the best, it's more like, would you like the result of it, right? Because when you, um, here, let me grab this again. When you, you know, puncture a hole or um, move the fabric around, like it's, it shows a little bit of the marks. So I wonder how much of the wax uh, texture of the fabric would come into play when you're doing your embroidery and if that would um, create a look that you're into. The fabric is durable enough to handle it because it is just, it is canvas, right? So it's canvas, but it's been waxed. So it still has that foundational behavior of, of canvas fabric. So I hope that helps. All right. So what else, what other questions do we have? Um, someone's asking about how, how do you make a saddle stitch and do you have to have a special machine and the same for a blanket stitch? So, um, saddle stitching is something that's done by hand a lot of times for leather and it's not, um, a machine stitch that I know is available on the home sewing machines that I use like the Singer or the Janome. And the same for the blanket stitch. Yeah. So I tend to do those by hand with waxed thread. And that's a, um, that's more of like a leather craft uh, skill, not necessarily a um, home sewing machine skill. So I hope that helps. Okay. I am just checking chat and I do not see a lot of other questions. So I am going to talk a little bit more about beginner bag making. So Oh, someone wants to know more about sewing with leather. Okay, let's talk about leather for a second, and then we'll get a little more into um, the projects for beginner bag making. Sorry, reading the chat. Sometimes it's hard to go live and read the chat at the same time, or Anna's interpretation of the chat because I can't see it. So, Yes, leather craft is a very vast skill that does overlap with bag making and domestic sewing, right? It is its own beast, and I, I can't pretend to be a master leather crafter. I know enough about it to make bags, but I don't, I'm not a specialist in leather. So I just say that because sometimes people will say, well, what kind of leather should I use for this? um, you know, project. And it's best to actually visit your local leather store. So like we have Tandy leather, which they know so much about leather or organ leather downtown. And they could tell you so much about leather, but essentially when you want to think about leather in the same way you think about fabric, there is so many different types of fabric the same thing with leather. There is so many different types of leather, not only the type of animal, but also the weight that the leather is. So that's essentially the thickness of the leather, how it's tanned, the process it goes through tanning. So that makes it like more supple or more stiff, right? So generally when we make straps for bags, we want to use leather that's around five, six, seven, eight ounce 
sometimes even up to 10 ounce. So, and we like to use two different types of leather for bag straps. We like to use vegetable tanned leather that's an English bridal leather, and that's going to be like a little bit stiffer and thicker. So we like to use the, that type of leather when we're using tubular rivets like this Maywood tote or like the Slabtown backpack that I showed you earlier. And then we also like to use a thinner leather that is chrome tanned. So that's just a different tanning process. I'm just turning this stop kit or this Portsmouth tote right side out again for our straps. And this is about a five to seven ounce leather, right? So these leathers tend to get a little thicker than what you would sew on the home sewing machine, whether it be heavy duty or um, non-heavy duty. When you get into bag making on an industrial machine, then you have a lot more option. But remember with leather, it doesn't have as much movement as fabric, right? So leather is... Um, more dense and has more structure a lot of times. So it's not going to curve around a certain shape in the same way that like a fabric would, right? And so that's going to really influence what you're able to sew, um, your access to machinery and sort of um, the final look that you're going to get, right? So um, the best way to see you know, can I sew this? What type of machine should I get? Is to actually try that type of leather on the type of machine. So that would mean buying the machine in, you know, a store versus online. So you can actually see like, oh, can I get the stitch that I want on this leather on this machine? So I hope that helps. I'm not sure if I answered your question correctly there, um, but let me know if you have more, if you want more details on that. Okay, so someone's asking about using two threads for the top stitch of your machine. I actually think that I have a video that's on YouTube about that. I'll have to see. I actually don't know. Um, but really quick, because I might not, I might as well show you what I mean here. So... I'm not going to thread this fully, but literally this is, I'm not kidding. This is what I mean is I have this spool of thread and this spool of thread. And I literally put them both on the machine. And then I run them both through every single spot that you would thread one through and through the same needle and the same thread, same um, hole in the eye of the needle, two threads. So all purpose thread, and then I and then I do put my bobbin how I normally put my bobbin. Just one bobbin, same all purpose thread. And the machine will have the two threads coming out of the eye of the needle and then the one thread in the bobbin, and it will just make a stitch. I kid you not. So that is a quick and dirty explanation. Um, go ahead and try it on your machine. I bet it will work. Okay. So questions? Okay, what the live Zooms are like. Um, great. Okay, so let's talk about beginner bag making for a second. So the beginner bag making class, and there's actually a um, landing page, a website landing page that has all the information broken down that, that will super help you know, so don't worry if I'm saying a lot of things and you can't follow it. But essentially, it's um, during the month of February. It's about three weeks long. And what we'll do is we'll go on a Zoom, all of us, and we'll um, welcome to the class, whatever. We'll talk about the projects. We'll talk about um, beginner bag making supplies. And then in between, in each week, you will watch the class for that week. So those are pre-recorded videos and then you'll do the projects. So the first one is actually just sewing 101 and it's an intro and a deep dive into how the sewing machine works. It tends to be like one of the classes where I hear, I get the most feedback from people that about aha moments that they've had. 
um, people that have been sewing forever and learn so much just in that class. And that we don't even make a project in that class. So I teach you about tension and timing, how the machine is designed to be used and how to maximize it to sort of unlock your creative potential with the sewing machine. So then we have um, the next project, which is the Portsmouth tote. And then you would have all your fabric and your pattern, right? And your leather and hardware. And you would um, follow the pre-recorded videos through the week to make that and be able to ask questions throughout if you get stuck. They're very straightforward projects. Um, then we have a live Zoom where you get to talk about how it went to do the project. Um, you get to talk about going into the next project, which is the Woodland Dop Kit. So basically, um, you have access to me throughout the whole class. If you get stuck making, and I'll, you can leave a comment in the community or in on the class itself, and I'll get back to you. If um, what I say doesn't make sense or doesn't help, I'll record a video and get back to you. Like, I am there to help you through the whole process. Then we come together um, for the live and we talk about, you know, what you learned, where you got stuck, what you want to know more about. And I'll do a live demo of anything if I need to, or if we want to talk about that, I'll deep dive into whatever the class wants to learn about. And then we go and we do our next project and we talk about, um, yeah, the what went well and what didn't, what you want to learn more about. Um, and you can ask me anything about sewing or bag making. And all this, the lives are recorded. So I have a lot of times in these classes, people won't take them in real time because they um, are busy or something comes up. So you have so much support through the time of the class where you can email and you can get answers there. Like, or you could comment on the video or join the live, or there's so many options um, to learn throughout the process, right? So I hope that helps there. Yeah, definitely. I was just checking chat. Definitely just um, reach out if with any questions. Like it's an active class. There's a lot going on and I cover a lot of stuff. So um, there's everything's always recorded and the recording recordings are always uploaded um, and sent to you within 24 hours after um, after a live happens. So, yeah, you don't have to attend them all um, live like you can watch the recordings after. And then you also have access to the pre-recorded videos for Sewing 101, Portsmouth Tote and Woodland Dop Kit you have evergreen access to those videos. So even if you sign up for beginner bag making and you um, don't finish your projects for whatever reason, because life is busy, you can still go back and watch those videos or say you want to make another one. Like you loved making the Woodland Dop Kit and you're like, oh my God, I want to make five more, but I need to refresh my memory. You're going to have access, evergreen access. So lifetime access to all those pre-recorded videos for the Woodland Dop Kit, the Portsmouth and Sewing 101. So let me know if that um, helps explain it. Um, the Zoom Q&As for beginner bag making will have themes and they will have um, loose agendas, right? So I would deep dive into um, you know, rivet setting on one of them. And I might deep dive into, you know, some aspect of your sewing machine on another. But if people have questions and they want to talk about a certain thing, that's okay too for folks to, um, to really show up and contribute their questions and, and we can have learning that's really unique for you. That's okay too. Yeah. So I try to keep it loose to make sure that people um, can ask the questions and get the answers they want. But I also could totally talk about any of the aspects in a deep dive. Um, so yeah, some questions about um, in-person classes in Portland. So we are, the next time I'm teaching in-person is actually going to be at the Sew Expo 
which is not necessarily in Portland. It's right outside of Seattle. So it's not that far. And it's a three, maybe four day um, sewing expo with tons of classes. So I'm not the only teacher there, but there is a ton going on. And I've taught at the Sew Expo for the past four five years now. And it is absolutely amazing. And it's so fun. And I meet, I get to meet people from all over. So I'm teaching um, the Portsmouth tote, which we have looked at a lot during this. And then I'm also teaching the Belmont um, pack and pouch. So it comes, there's a pouch in the pattern. So I'm teaching those two classes at the Sew Expo. And that's the first week, weekend in March. So I think that one of the classes is on a Wednesday, so it's like starts halfway through the week, then it goes through the weekend. Um, and I'll have Anna put a link in chat for the Sew Expo. So you can, those tickets are open now and those classes are open for registration now. So that's the next time I'm teaching live. And then I hope to add more um, or teaching in person. Hope to add more in-person classes this year. And since it's only January, I'm just in the middle of kind of working out scheduling and um, collaborations for that. So stay tuned. If you're not on our newsletter, then go ahead and um, get on there. And that's where I'll announce all of any um, in-person classes. But I do have some collaborations brewing and I hope to do more events and, and expos for that matter. But the Sew Expo is the, the next one that's confirmed. And that's in the first weekend in March. And that's in Tequila, which is right south of Seattle. Okay, let me see if there is any other questions in chat before we wrap it up. So people are asking some machine specific questions um, about sewing machines that I have never owned or used. So it's hard for me to answer that, but um, the, if you own those machines, th then try, please try like the layers, like actually do some tests on the machines. Like I know sometimes people are scared to do that because they don't want to break their machine, but you could always use the hand wheel. And if you use the hand wheel and turn it and the needle literally won't puncture the fabric, then it's not going to sew it. Right. So um, you can try and play around with that too. But generally, um, Honestly, I haven't met a sewing, a home sewing machine that hasn't been able to sew bags or with wax canvas. Now, of course, it depends on the thickness of the fabric, and it also depends on how many layers you're trying to sew through. So you might be able to get through two layers, but your machine doesn't want to make a stitch through four layers. And you might be able, you know what I mean? So I definitely think the best way, and some machines can be the same model, but be in better condition than other machines, right? So setting the machine up for success, the best way to know is to actually try some of the things that you're wondering. Can you get a good stitch? Well, what does a good stitch look like? Well, it doesn't have, it has good tension, right? And it doesn't have a frayed thread. Um, it's, you can tell that the loops in the thread are in the stitch are being hidden between the layers. And again, we're starting to get into the technicalities that I talk about in the Sewing 101 class, where we do that deep dive into learning how to answer this question, can my machine sew that? So um, if you have a sewing machine that is being advertised as heavy duty or has metal parts or is an older machine from like the 70s, chances are it is robust enough to sew pretty thick stuff because it has a stronger motor. Older machines tend to be made with metal parts and those metal parts tend to be on machines that have stronger motors. But when I taught um, sewing 101 in person, before COVID, people would bring all, people would often bring their own machines to class. And um, they'd be all types of machines. And a lot of times they're machines that they inherited um, or, you know, are, got at the thrift store. Like one of my favorite sewing machines I've, I use, I got at Goodwill for $35 and it's an old Janome. So, and it can sew anything I want to sew on it. So, yeah. So it's not, it's more about really seeing like what can the machine do by actually trying it and don't going, don't go pedal to the metal, but you know, um, try that thread, try that needle, 
try that fabric, try those layers. Can you get a good stitch? Right? So I hope that helps. Okay, so I'll take a couple more questions and then we'll wrap it up. Um, oh, I like this one. How waterproof is wax canvas? So wax canvas is not waterproof because you can, water will still get through it, but it is water resistant, which means that like uh, water will bead up on it and you can brush it off, right? But it won't um, keep it from coming in, okay? So some wax canvas is a lot, uh, what is it, tighter of a weave? And a lot of the wax canvases we sell are like that. Um, and that will, you know, keep the water from coming in. But over time, the wax finish will wear off and you will have to like re-wax the fabric to keep it a little bit more waterproof um, or water resistant. Yeah. So I would say it's, it's pretty good at keeping water off of you, like, but it will get soaked. And the older it gets, the more um, the oil will wear off and the wax will wear off and it will, you know, permeate a little more and you'd have to re-wax it or refinish it. Okay. Let's see if there's any more questions in chat. Oh, good question. Are your classes only focused on wax canvas and leather? So for the beginner bag making class, we talk a lot about the sewing machine and how it works and, and how to learn how to use it, right? Because it's a beginner class. So I kind of start from scratch and I start from how the machine, how to thread the machine, what the knobs are, like how to really use your sewing machine. So it's a really good just beginner sewing class in general. Now, because most of my kits and patterns are focused on wax canvas and leather techniques, that tends to be the style that I teach. But um, the, uh, like oh, what I wanna say, like the foundational skills, the, uh, the understanding of the more philosophical aspects, because I do teach a lot of sort of softer parts of sewing, um, can be applied to all types of sewing. I do have a class that is called Design and Make, where people will use all types of materials and they learn how to design and make a bag from scratch. It's a more advanced class and it and it goes into specializing in whatever materials that person wants to use. But for the sake of the beginner bag making and the intermediate classes, we use the kits that we sell and they are using the materials of wax canvas, leather, and metal because the techniques that you can learn when you make those bags, you can apply them to all types of fabrics. Okay. Um, oh, yes. Someone's asking, have you used a serger to finish um, the edges of wax canvas? And yes, I have. Um, you'll just want to make sure that the cutting aspects of the serger are sharp, right? Because it's thicker fabric. Um, and are we supposed to have our pattern cut out prior to the beginning of the beginner bag making class? No, not necessarily. You have a whole week to work on that project. So you can cut it out during the week that, that, that we're focused on that project. Yeah. They're, they're pretty um, simple projects because it is a very beginner class. And let's end on this last question here since we are at 6.20 p.m. What is the best machine to make a bag? So I, again kind of like, this is a good question to recap some of the stuff I talked about. Um, love to work with heavy duty home sewing machines for bag making because they're very versatile. So um, like the H, the Janoni HD 1000, the HD stands for heavy duty or HD 3000, which this is the newer model is one of my favorite for bag making. And so is the Singer HD 4423. And both of these machines are mentioned in a blog post on my website that is about like um, sewing machines and bag making. Um, so we can put that link in chat for you. 
So those are my favorite machines for home sewing bag making. Now, if you're getting into industrial sewing and want to sew leather or thicker stuff like multiple layers of synthetics like ballistic nylon, 1000 denier cordura, um, heavier weight leather, then you should get an industrial walking foot sewing machine. And my favorite industrial walking foot sewing machines are going to be the Conso 206 RB5, the Sailrite Fabricator, the Juki DNU 1541S. Um, so those are just three of the machines I used to teach on and that I've manufactured bags on. And I just love all three of those machines for different reasons. So um, I guess I'll leave you on that note that you don't need an industrial machine to make bags. All of our patterns are designed for home sewing machines. So my specialty is helping people learn how to make professional quality bags on a home sewing machine. But if you have access to industrial equipment and you want to get into the industrial realm, I highly encourage it. Um, but you don't need an industrial machine to make and learn how to make professional bags. All right. Thank you so much for bearing with me through my technical difficulties in the meeting of the stream. For those of you that couldn't end up watching live, um, thanks for watching the recording. And I hope to see you in beginner bag making or in one of my future classes. Um, feel free to email or ask us questions. And yeah, it was nice hanging out with you. Have a good night.